Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to this channel, the Shepherd's Voice channel. My name is Dr. Gichi Kunyabwe. Today we want to look at uh, the third encounter of Africa with Christianity. You know, there are so many encounters of Christianity with Africa. The first encounter was from the north part, the northern part of Africa where the Portuguese and the Arabs were in conflict. You know, the northern part of Africa was under the control of the Romans. When the Romans and uh, Alexander the Great conquered, you know, he conquered the Greeks, he conquered the Jews, and um, he conquered the northern part of Africa. And uh, Alexander the Great had a dream of conquering the whole world so that he can have dominion. Rome can have dominion over the whole world so that they can have the benefit of collecting taxes and uh, making itself rich to control businesses, to control um, uh, travels, to control I mean, to have full control of the whole world and develop a kingdom which is stronger than all other kingdoms well over. Now, that aside, today we are looking at the encounter, the third encounter of Christianity in Africa. So let's now look at the development of the modern missionary movement, the revival movement of the 18th century. 18th century was uh, involved, so many activities took place in the 18th century. But in the religious sphere, what is known is, uh, the 18th century is known as the era of en enlightenment. People were getting enlightened. Religion was so much questioned in the 18th century, scientists were coming in with innovations. Scientists were demanding explanations from the religious experts. And they wanted religion to defend most of the views and defenses. So without going far, we are going to examine the meaning and purpose of revivalism in the 18th century and the effect of the 18th century revivalism on the spread of Christianity in Africa and consequently the establishment of a lasting church in Africa. You know, there were so many attempts to bring Christianity to Africa by the Portuguese. The Portuguese were traders and explorers. They wanted to control Africa so that they could have trade and businesses flourish from Africa. You know, the Portuguese had an eye in Africa. They wanted to get the raw materials for their countries and they also wanted to make history to have their people come and settle in Africa, control business, and they use Africans to produce and therefore to develop their mother countries. Now, what is the meaning of revivalism? What are the effects of the revival movements in the beginning and spread of Christianity in Africa? Revivalism and its contribution to the start and development of Christianity in Africa. Now, before we go far, let's find out what is the meaning of revivalism and its purpose. What is the meaning and purpose of revivalism? Revivalism simply means the renewal, the rebirth, reawakening, or re-energizing, especially in the church. This term is taken to actually mean or make Christians rethink and repractice what the disciples did in Jerusalem immediately after the ascension of Jesus Christ. Their hearts were rekindled, they were renewed, they were re-energized 
and they were refocused. They focused again on their ministry, particularly when they received the Holy Spirit. So revivalism involves the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, witnessing during the day of Pentecost, which is supposed to bring a positive transformation in the life of Christians. The day of Pentecost remains a mark in the history of Christians. Why? Because it is on this day that the Christians went back to the basics, went back to the foundations to know the purpose for which Christ began a Christian community we call Christians. So revivalism at times follows a period of falling off from the standard and is sometimes needed in the church to foster evangelism. So there is a revivalism and evangelism are two terms which are related and they work together. When people are revived, they focus on evangelism. When they know their role and purpose, revivalism makes them to know their role and purpose, their place in the Christian church, and therefore they focus on evangelism, which is meant to enrich the church with Christians. Now, let's now focus on the 18th century revival movements. The revival movements of the 18th century. During the 18th century, there was a great revival among the Protestants in Europe, which later spread to North America. During this period, the church in Europe was at the lowest. It was a period of enlightenment when there was a lot of scientific discoveries and people began to discard God and the society which was becoming more secular. The 18th century, the church experienced challenges. This was a, a time and era of discoveries. Enlightenment meaning people are getting new ideas, scientists are coming, discoveries are in place, and Christianity was engaged. Tell us why you believe in this. What is the role and the place of faith in development, in socio-economic development? What's the role of religion in political philosophy? What is the role of religion in innovations and discoveries? What is the role of religion in human development, in leadership, and in all this other stuff? If theologians of the time were not well prepared to answer these questions, it set them to the drawing board to find out and discover the roots of Christianity and be able to defend their faith. Ladies and gentlemen, the church and the Christian communities began to decline because of the questions which were rising. Some were tough questions. And the young people who were engaged in academic endeavors, some who wanted to become renowned scientists, and some who sometimes did not have strong foundations in Christianity left the church and the elderly and not well informed theologians remained in the church. But you know what? There's no error in the Christian history that God is not. God was in perfect control and those who remained in the faith had to come up with new strategies of defending Christianity as a religion. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a period, this period, the 18th century, is popularly referred to as the history of the Great Awakening, meaning there was too much slumber, people were on comfort zone, Christians were on comfort zone, theologians were not uh, well founded, they had to wake up. 
and come up with uh, a way that Christianity will um, have its renowned prominency during that time. Ladies and gentlemen, two important things resulted from this revival, and that is evangelicalism, evangelicalism, and evangelism. The 18th century great awakening when religion and Christianity in general was put to question that question which uh, was posed to Christianity and religion in general enabled the church to come up with two important things evangelicalism and evangelism now what is evangelicalism and what was this process and how did it help in the later start and development of Christianity in Africa? The revival had brought a great change in the lives of many Euro European as well as North American Christians. There was a great desire among Christians of the revival to end slave trade. The Portuguese and Spanish had began sugar plantations in Brazil and other parts of discovered lands and required a large amount of unskilled labor. Slaves from Africa seemed to seemed the solution. Slave trade increased consequently. Some Christians began feeling that it was wrong, inhuman and unchristian. So Christians started questioning. You know, the Europeans had set up the Spanish, I mean the Portuguese and the Spanish had begun big plantations, tea and sisal plantations in Brazil. And the Christians were being Africans particularly who were captured as slaves were taken to these plantations to work. This became an entry point of Christians. Christians during the 18th century, the era of great awakening, they opposed this wrong, inhuman, and unchristian practice of slave trade, slavery and slave trade. And this was so interesting. This is how the world again, which was questioning the relevance and authority of Christians joined the Christian bandwagon. The, these Christians began complaining against slave trade and working towards getting away with it. They wanted to get slavery outlawed. They wanted to begin. They started begin begin. They start. They started or they began freedom endeavors. Freedom endeavors for the slaves. There's one man who was a, a Protestant Christian and uh, his name was William Wilberforce. William Wilberforce is a known character in church history. William Wilberforce who fought for the abolition of slave trade in the British Parliament was an evangelical Christian. And he fought it he presented slave trade in the British Parliament as unlawful, unchristian, wrong, evil, backward and irrelevant practice. And uh, his ideas were accepted and um, was given a lot of attention. Later, the Christians set up settlements for freed slaves, for example, Freetown, Sierra Leone, Bugamayo in East Africa. So these centers which were built, the Freetown centers, the Freetown centers where the slaves were being reclaimed and they were taken to those free towns, the slaves who were captured, who were brought back, who were reclaimed, who were saved from the ordeal of getting to Brazil and other countries of the West to work, they became the first 
students of evangelism. They were taught Christianity in the centers, in the free towns. They were prepared to become local missionaries. You know what? These people in the free towns, they were taught many skills, including farming skills. In these centers, they, they, around the centers, they, plant, they had big plantations of coffee, sisal, and tea, and other farming activities, daily farming. And uh, this became interesting. They say, these guys you have brought, you are going to take to the European countries to work. They can work here in Africa. And if they can work here in Africa, they can improve the lives of Africans. And if you so want the Portuguese, if you want raw, raw goods, you can have plantations here employ or take Africans not as slaves but as workers who are paid so that you don't separate them from your people. This became interesting and this is how Africa, this is how the Portuguese, the British, the British people and others from the Brazil and other countries of the world came and were given land by the colonial masters in Africa to plant tea, coffee, sisal, daily farming, things which they would have taken slaves to work in their countries back home. They came here and were given land and the Africans freely went there to work and they were given pay at the end of the month regardless of how meager the payments were. But this was an uproar. It helped to stop slave trade. And Africans were able to work. In the event of working, Africans learned new skills. That's why later you find Africans, I mean, started practicing daily farming. Africans had their own tea plantations and coffee plantations, which are there up to this day. Africans discovered, and you see, they took this advantage to learn from the whites. And when countries uh, became uh, free, when freedom was attained in most African countries, then Africans started practicing these. Um, these uh, farming activities which they will have gone to the other countries overseas to work. So evangelism gave impetus for new missionary efforts in Africa that was just getting started. You know, when slave trade was stopped by William Wilberforce in uh, a British government, when it was outlawed, now Africans started appreciating efforts of Christianity and that is how it was now easy for um, Christian missionaries to flood in Africa, to come from other countries, to come and begin their missionary centers in Africa. Because slave trade, which was annoying Africans, was now a thing of the past, outlaw because of the efforts of William Wilberforce. Now, evangelism has started in Africa. Let's look at evangelism in Africa. The Christians in Europe and America became concerned about the needs and the salvation of people in other parts of the world like Africa. Because of the stories they were reading, they were reading stories which were written by the Portuguese and other explorers about Africa. Now they developed a lot of interest in Africa because they wanted to bring Christianity to Africa because of the Great Commission. Jesus says, go ye therefore and preach them, give them the gospel by baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because of this great desire to reach out with the gospel to other people, many different Protestant and Christian and Roman Catholic missionary societies were established with the aim of taking Christianity to Africa. One of the famous personalities involved in the venture is William Calley of the Evangelical Wing of the Anglican Church in England. This was one of the great men who was involved, William Calley from England. He spoke to many different groups of British in order to, Baptists in order to present to them the need for missionaries to take the gospel 
to other parts of the world, including Africa. As a result, the Baptist Missionary Society was formed in 1972. A year later, Carley, that is William Carley, and other missionaries left England for India to become the first missionaries of this society. Their reports soon came to the attention of, of other Christians in other churches so that, they, so that many other missionaries were established. Other personalities include John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church. Other revival groups include the Pietists and the Moravians in Germany and the Evangelical Wing of the Anglican Church in England. These are some of the people and the Christian mission societies which took Africa as a fertile land for evangelism. Now here is a list of uh, some of the Christian missionaries who came to Africa when slave trade stopped, Africans appreciated Christianity, it is the era of the Enlightenment, now Christian missionaries are flooding to Africa. These are the missionary societies, Baptist Missionary Society, PSM, BMS, London Mission Society, LMS, Scottish Mission Society, SMS, the Church Mission Society, CMS, British and Foreign Bible Society, American Board of Commissioners for Foreign Missions, Wesleyan Methodist Missionary Society, American Baptist Foreign Missionary Society, Parcel Missionary Society, Paris Missionary Society, and the University's Mission to Africa. These are some of the mission societies which took interest and um, brought Christianity to Africa. They were more organized. They were a group of Christians, not the Portuguese, not people who were not well versed with Christianity in general. These groups were sponsored from the Western countries. They had a number of missionaries and theologians involved. They brought the brand of Christianity in Africa, which opposed the slave trade, and Africans started receiving Christianity without any question. Now, those were Protestant missionaries I listed above. What about the Catholic missionary societies? Was Catholic left out? No. Catholics also had Africa at heart and they therefore during this time of evangelism sent their missionaries to Africa. The Roman Catholic Church also experienced a renewal of missionary activity especially because of a new organization called Association of Propagation of the Faith. The Association of the Propagation of the Faith this was a, a new organization which was formed by Catholics back from France, which was formed in 1819. The association did not have its own missionaries, but it supported the work of missionary societies like the Holy Ghost Fathers with, the, with money raised in Europe. There is raised money in Europe, this uh, association of the propagation of faith they came handy to help the Holy Ghost Fathers. They funded them. And if you can check history of Christianity in Africa, you realize that the Holy Ghost Fathers were very, very instrumental in evangelization in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, the leading Catholic, uh, the leading Catholic country engaged in the missionary activities in Africa was France. France was a uh, very, very instrumental in sending and um, supporting missionary work in Africa. The Catholic missionary societies that brought Christianity to Africa include, from France, we had the Holy Ghost Fathers, we had Fathers of Lyon, and we also had the White Fathers. These three groups came from France. I said, the Holy Ghost Fathers, the Fathers of Lyon and the White Fathers. All these came
came from France and they were well funded. That's why they were able to go wherever they could go, build schools, build churches, and give gifts to Africans. And this made Africans to join Christianity. Other, another country which was involved in the spread, in the bringing of uh, Catholic missionaries to Africa was Italy. It, from Italy, we have the, the two groups of um, missionaries. The first one was the Verona Fathers. Verona Fathers and the Consolata Fathers. These two groups were very instrumental in bringing Christianity to Africa. Another country which was involved was England. England. From England we had the Mill Hill Fathers. The Mill Hill Fathers. Other Catholic societies include the Jesuits, the Dominicans, and the, Bene the Benedictines. Women's contribution came from the Mill Hill Sisters, the Precious Blood, Consolata, and White Sisters. They were so instrumental in bringing Christianity to Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, we know that the progress and of evangelization was slow at first since all these societies were small and they were attempting something new. Nevertheless, over the years, the societies grew and the number of people interested in serving in the church in different parts of Africa increased. Africa was very receptive. Africa was very receptive. Africans were very welcoming. As long as slave trade was stopped and was dehumanized and it was made criminal and outlawed, Africans started accepting the efforts of the coming of the missionaries to Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for listening to this presentation about the start and development of missionary work in Africa. We have seen effects of uh, evangelism, revival and evangelism. We have seen the great awakening. We have seen what happened during the great awakening. How Christianity discouraged slave trade and how the whole world was happy about that. And when slave trade was stopped and how William Wilberforce defended or protested in uh, the British Parliament against slave trade and we see how slave trade was an outlawed and how that attracted Africans and when Africans were at peace with this they were able to accept more coming of missionaries and they evangelized Africa. We have seen a number of mission societies which came Protestants and Catholics and Africa received Christianity and uh, from here we will proceed to see how missionaries came to Africa what they went through and how they survived the challenges of preaching and evangelizing Africa until today we have Christianity one of the largest religions in Africa covering more than 60% of all Africans. Thank you. Thank you so much.